As a kid, I remember that my interest in electronics grew from admiration of what these smart engineers had come up with to curiosity about how these things worked. The curiosity led me to use an old screwdriver that my dad had left in a drawer to open anything electronic with a screw large enough for the screwdriver to fit in. A record player, a VCR, a radio, all became my victims. I'm still amazed that a charged capacitor didn't electrocute me. At least I had the good sense to unplug the appliance from the mains. I found all sorts of amazing things inside. Resistors, transformers, integrated circuits, displays and much more. And all of those things were fitted onto green boards just like this one. Or purple ones like this one. In this lecture, I'd like to take a closer look at a few example PCBs and have a look at what a PCB looks like, some of its features, and the terminology that we use to describe these features. Just a short interruption to let you know that this video is part of my comprehensive KiCad course that will teach you every aspect of creating printed circuit boards with KiCad from scratch. Go to the course page to learn more about it if you want. Find the link to the course page in the description below and treat yourself with a discount coupon for my YouTube viewers. Okay, let's continue with the video. What you see here are a couple of example PCBs that I'm going to use to describe some of the features that make up PCBs. This one here, for example, is one of the projects in this course, and it's the PCB for a power board power supply. Once it's populated with its components, it's going to look like this, and you'll be able to plug it onto a breadboard like this and get five volts power for your Arduino or other electronics projects. So straight away, when you look at the front of a PCB, you see all of its main features. So you've got the holes in which you will connect and mount various components. When you see a hole, then the component that will fit it is called a throughput component. So it's a component that has pins that come out of it and then uh, you pass them through the hole and you use solder to attach it in place. An alternative way to attach components onto a PCB <coughs> demonstrated by this Raspberry Pi Zero is called a surface mount component. These components are so small that I need a bit of magnification to show you exactly what those look like. So let's use this uh, magnifying glass and have a look here. So see, for example, this large integrated circuit is an SMD, a surface mounted component. It doesn't have pins that go through to the other side of the PCB. The device is completely uh, situated on one side, usually the front, although you can have uh, SMD components mounted or the, on the back side of the PCB. But see how small these things are. So these things here are tiny, tiny SMD resistors. You can barely see them. It'd be very, very hard for me even with these pointy tweezers to put them in place. So these are manufactured automatically using robots. Uh, you've got slightly larger SMD components, like for example, these SMDs. These are probably resistors. I can't be sure. It could be capacitors as well. But see, I can actually use my tweezers and manipulate them. Of course, they are attached now, I can't move them, but it's possible manually to mount and attach such SMD components as well. And in one of the projects in this course, you are going to produce one of these, uh, one of these boards, which are almost exclusively containing SMD components. You can see them. And I've taken care to find appropriate footprints for the components that are large enough to be able to manipulate them manually so without having a robotic assembly line. So that's one thing that dominates a PCB and that has to do with the pads on which you attach the components. Another thing that you can see here are those lines so those lines, you can see they are purple in this example, and that's because of the masking chemical that we've used to protect them from the elements. 
So these lines here are made of copper and connect electrically the various pads and therefore the various components with each other. You can have another look at this PCB and you can see that these thin lines represent tracks. Use the magnifying glass to give you a better look at this. So there you go. If I get the light to reflect light, uh, nicely on the surface of the PCB, then you can see the tracks. And the tracks are made of copper, just like the pads are, but they take the color of the masking chemical that, as I said earlier, uh, is used to protect the PCB, especially the copper tracks, which, which are easily oxidized from the elements. So on the back, you'll see a lot more of those lights. And here's another PCB as well from another one of my projects. And uh, because uh, I don't have copper on the back copper layer of this PCB, uh, the single track that is running through at the back is much easier to notice. And this one is green because of the green masking chemical that uh, the manufacturer used in this case. Another dominating element of a PCB is a silk screen. So anything that you see in this example here, colored white, like this big box here, the numbers that represent the value of this resistor, other markings like DHT22, for example, here, the logo, the back, there's a bit more, they can see the markings for each of the pins. All those things are printed using a white ink on the top or the bottom of the board and it's called the silk screen. And we use the silk screen exactly for this purpose, either to provide a bit of artwork like the logo here, make our board look nice, but also to provide important information for the end user to help the end user, for example, with the assembly process or later on with the usage process. So you can see here, there's information about the roles of each pin. Again, I'm going to use my magnifying glass to give you a better view of this. So here, for example, you can see that this particular pad is ground. This one is data. This one is a 5 volt power supply. This one is an LED. The value for this resistor is 10 Ks and so on. So this is all very useful information to help the end user assemble the PCB. But then you see other information down here in the, the uh, headers, pins, which these are more useful for the end user for actually using the gadget that you are uh, building using this PCB. This is an Arduino shield. And once you populate it with all of its components and the screen, this is what these holes are about. Uh, they are there to make it possible to mount and attach an LCD display. But you can see now that I've got the headers here and the information that I've got printed on the uh, PCB allows me to know what is the role of each one of the pins, not so much assembly anymore, but usage. And you can see how the components went onto this particular PCB. So the silk screen is also a dominant and important part of a PCB. There's a couple of other little things I wanted to point out. First of all, I'm going to take this as a sample. I'm going to use a magnifying glass here because the feature that I'm going to show you is tiny. See this little hole here that I'm pointing to right now? This is much larger than the holes that we use for throughput components. These are called vias. And vias allow you to interconnect tracks that are running on the on different layers on the board. So you could have boards that have just a front and a back layer. You would use a via if you want a track to start at the front layer and then continue to the back. So you punch in a hole using a drill or even lasers if you want to make it really, really tiny. And then that's how you allow the tracks to connect electrically. But you can also have layers 
sandwiched in between the top and the bottom layer so you can have four layer boards so these are boards that have a top a bottom and then two copper layers in between which allow for a lot more of these copper traces to run through and connect things together and again you'd use vias to make electrical connections possible between trucks that are running in, in the inside copper layers just like that you can with the outside copper layers Another big feature is the color that you can see here is purple in this case, it's green in this case, uh, blue with this example, and also have a red here, just give you a red really quickly. So here's a variation of uh, the same board but using red. Now this these colors are created by the solder mask so the solder mask is a chemical substance that covers the entire real estate of the board except where you want to actually have the ability to attach and solder components in on that is on the pads and then on top of the solder mask you put the silk screen the purpose of the solder mask is not just to make our pcb look better or look nicer but also to prevent the copper on the PCB from being oxidized over time. So the oxidization of the copper tracks will negatively affect its conductivity. So we want to protect that. And that's why we use this chemical. Another thing that the solder mask does is to make it easier to solder by hand. So because these pads are made of copper in the, or in this case, and this particular one is made of gold, the, the solder once it's hot, will very easily stick on these pads. And because these pads sometimes are very close to each other, it can actually create shorts between them. So you can have a blob of solder uh, electrically attach or attach, I should say, uh, on two adjacent pads. And then you've got a short. And of course, we want to prevent that. Now, the tiny amount of soldering mask in between two pads make this short harder to happen. So it protects us from uh, introducing defects on our board during assembly. And the same thing happens here. See the, the gaps between the surface mounted component pads right here are much smaller than the gaps between uh, holes for through hole components so even at this tiny distance, the small area in between the pads that has a solder mask on it prevents shorts. So that's another very important role that solder mask plays. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is the material that we are using to make PCBs. So you can make PCBs with using, by using a lot of different materials, um, but most commonly you'll see PCBs that are made of fiberglass or FR4. I've got a separate lecture further down in this course that talks more about the types of materials that you can use to make PCBs, but uh, the, this in particular and pretty much all of the ones that I built uh, using the various online manufacturers I use uh, do so using a standard FR4 material, which is uh, a version of fiberglass. This particular one is 1.6 millimeters in width, which is the standard width for uh, PCBs. You can make them half that, of course. You can see that this version of uh, this PCB here from Osh Park has got half the width of the green PCB. Another interesting feature uh, is the copper fill. The copper fill is a large area on the PCB that is filled continuously with copper. So this uh, lighter colored green area is such a copper fill. You can see that the darker area doesn't have any copper at all. So this is copper filled. And copper fill you use it in order to prevent from too much copper being lost. Uh, copper is expensive, so you want to minimize losses and also the use of chemicals during the etching process. But uh, there's also electrical 
benefits in having copper fields, especially copper fields that you connect to ground. So they can protect your gadgets, or your gadgets operations from electromagnetic interference, for example. It also makes it easier to connect uh, various pads, in this particular ground level pads with uh, the ground level uh, tracks and other copper fields. And the way by which you connect a copper field to a pad is using thermal reliefs. I'll use my magnifying glass one more time to show you one. So in this green PCB, you can see that I've got tiny tracks. There's three here that connect this pad with the copper field. So this is how you can do an electrical connection between them. You can see this little pad here has got one, two, three, four, five tracks that's called thermal reliefs. And that's how you can connect uh, copper fuel to a pad. Awesome. So I hope that this gives you a, a good uh, understanding of some of the most important elements of a PCB and some of the terminology. We are going to look into all of that in more detail in an upcoming section and a series of lectures. So let's move on to the next lecture now, where I'll talk about the PCB design process.